So tell you, keep it clean before we get into this episode of questions from y'all. Don't let nobody kill your vibe. Because people, they gonna try to kill your vibe. If their vibe is messed up and they see your vibe is not, they gonna try to bring you down. And, and, and please don't let people who don't matter. And, and, I, and, and it's tough to say that, but there's a lot of negative people out there. But don't let people who don't matter mess up your vibe. Straight up like that. And a shout out to, um, to Avram. Abraham D. Uh, and that is the newest Team Keep It Clean patron. Uh, appreciate y'all. Anybody else want to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, you don't have to. But if you want to, you can go to patreon.com slash engravingvids. And if you don't want to, please. It's not a necessity. It's crazy. Um, it's a very small world. It's a super, super small world. Uh, we were just up in Orlando uh, for a little, just last second vacation. Um, so we went up there, had a lot of fun. And the first day we got there, we go to this this random Burlington and this newly developed shopping center, and we literally walk in. And while we walking in, somebody yells behind us, "Team, keep it clean!" And I'm like, "What?" Like, it, and 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 it was, it was crazy. And I, I felt so bad because I didn't even get my guy's name, man. As I said, "What's up to him?" And, and thank them for for watching and supporting the videos and stuff. Uh, but it's just crazy how how small uh, of a world it is. I just thought that was just wild. Um, anyway, uh, first question would, is from uh, Ras Ras Dashin. I, I, I I'm sorry if I messed up your name. My apologies. Um, but the question is, who are the potential wide receiver cuts from other teams you want the Ravens to look at? Uh, also, are you surprised they haven't brought in Will Fuller for a workout? I don't know. I like as far as wide receivers with the Ravens. Um, I really can't think of any like potential cuts that I would expect them to take a look at that I would think that they would be having their eyes on or anything like that. Because um, I just don't really know who's expected to be released. And um, I mean, for Ravens, like who who? I mean, it, it all just depends on who gets released. But as far as wide receivers, it's like all right, let, let, let's just see. Let, let's see what we got. Let's see. Let's see how it goes. Let's see what happens. And as far as Will Fuller. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I, you know what? Initially, when I thought about it, oh yeah, it's a little surprising. Will Fuller's not on a team yet, but at the same time, when you think about it, if Will Fuller signs to a team right now and he makes the 53 man roster, then every single one of his game checks from weeks one through 17 would be guaranteed. But if the team signs him after week one, then he would be on a week to week basis. And I think a team would be like, man, Will Fuller with the injuries and whatnot, we don't want to sign him to a fully guaranteed deal because we just don't know. So I would expect Will Fuller to get signed after week one. So the whole contract is not guaranteed. I learned that from the Ravens, by the way. A question also came from a patron who is my guy, uh, Jake Young. And Jake, please let me know if I say your name the wrong way. Uh, but he said, how big, and he's, he's a Titans fan. And still rocking with Team Keep It Clean, so we appreciate that. He said, how big would you consider the Ravens-Steelers rivalry to be? And could you tell the best game you've seen or watched in person? Oh, um, wow, that, that's an interesting question. The Steelers-Ravens rivalry, it, it's, it's died down a lot, in my opinion. I know a lot of people, they won't like to hear that, but it's true. It's, it's my opinion. I, I think it's died down a whole lot. It's just, it hasn't been the same for a while now. Um, and, and I think that's because a lot of the, the, the bigger names have certainly left the rivalry. And of course, the newer names, they got to create their own. But it's just it's not what it used to be. Like, of course, Raven Steelers week is always like, oh, yeah, you look forward to it. But it's just it's not the same as what it used to be. It doesn't have the same like enthusiasm and hype that it, it once had. Um, and as far as the uh, and hopefully it comes back. Um, it's not like a dead rivalry or anything like that, but it's just, it's not the same. So I guess that this is sort of a new era in the Ravens Steelers rivalry. And a lot of it has to do with the rule changes and stuff. You, you can't hit people like you used to. You can't even look at people like you used to in the NFL without getting a penalty. But yeah, it's, it's just not the same to me. Um, and he said, uh, could you tell the best game you've seen or watched in person? Now, are, are you talking about the Steelers rivalry or just the best game you've seen? E either way, um... If you're talking about the Raven Steelers rivalry, best game for me uh, was in 2011, um, where and I always talk about this game because it's one of my favorite Ravens games ever. When the Ravens finally beat the Steelers in Pittsburgh with Ben Roethlisberger starting at quarterback, because they would there was a period of time where they could never do all three at the same time. 
It was either they beat the Steelers or it might have been in Baltimore. Or they beat the Steelers in Pittsburgh, but Roethlisberger wasn't the starting quarterback. It was always something that wasn't checked off on that list, but that was the first time they did it. And it, that, that game went in drive uh, wonderfully orchestrated by Flacco and company and Torrey Smith and Anquan Bolden. And, and for Flacco to still go back to his guys, I loved the trust that he put in uh, Torrey Smith. Because I think he, cause he had a drop. He had a touchdown drop. And then a couple plays later, Flacco went right back to him. The trust that he put in Anquan Bolden, because he had a drop on that drive too, I believe. And Flacco went right back to him. Um, and it was just, it, it was crazy. Uh, it was crazy to watch that game, watch everything just develop. Uh, and then I was so happy. I, I really thought that was the Ravens here. And it could have been, but, you know, Billy Cundiff and all the Lee Evans got the ball stripped. And, you know, but anyway. Um, and as far as the best game that I've watched in person, um, probably the uh, Ravens Dolphins 2019 Lamar opening opening day um, what other games I mean yeah that'd probably be the the, the, the best one uh, and there've been some other good Ravens Dolphins games that we've seen um, and then there was the one last year in person it was like oh, yeah uh the Ravens Jets game that we went to wasn't oh that it wasn't like mm. oh no 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 best game that I went to in person um because the, the stadium was just the loudest that I've ever heard it was Ravens Browns week the week 17 um 2018 Lamar's rookie year when they were playing for the division never been to a game that has ever been that loud at MT Bank Stadium before I haven't um I have never seen that stadium just right it was literally like shaking it was shaking because it was so loud um but yeah, that would be the best one that I ever went to uh, in person. Next question came from my boy A.W. Juice Man. He said, hey, Bling Raven, hope everything is well, brother. Always showing you love and support. Appreciate that, man. I, I know how much you love wrestling, and it's indeed time to play the game. Well, I don't, I don't love it anymore. I used to. And sometimes from time to time, I check in and see what's going on. But I, yeah, I just, I don't, I don't love it like I used to. Uh, but anyway, he said, uh, yeah, time to play the game. Triple H reference, obviously. Yeah, I got that, man. I remember. Uh, he said, but check this out. Here's what people aren't talking about and discussing. The tight ends and undrafted wide receivers are getting the buzz with all the talk of competition and who will start over who. But here's the, here's the billion-dollar question in my Vince McMahon voice. Who will start at CB3 on that very field? Between Brandon Stevens, Pepe Williams, it's hard to choose a guess, right? No. I think it'll be Kyle Fuller. I think it'll be Kyle Fuller. I think Brandon Stevens is going to be on the field a lot. I think with Brandon Stevens, I think he's going to be somebody that they have all these different roles for. They'll have him at cornerback. They'll have him at safety. I think they're, and it's crazy what they can do at safety right now. Because you obviously got Chuck Clark, you got Marcus Williams, and you got Kyle Hamilton. Then you got Brandon Stevens. You're probably going to have Geno Stone, Tony Jefferson. I feel like uh, right now, emotionally, they're going to keep him on the roster. But I think he really got to have a bounce back game tonight. Because that last game was rough. It, it, it was rough. Um, so we'll see what happens. But they got a lot that they can do at the safety position. But as far as slot corner, that CB3, um, I would say uh, Kyle Fuller. Um, Brandon Stevens, got a, he got a chance to be there too. But I, I would say Kyle Fuller. But anyway, uh, he said, it's hard to choose a guest, right? It's like having unlimited access to Walmart, but also Amazon delivers your wants and needs. Half off weekly, all in bundles. Who will be the cornerback three, Pepe or Brandon? Yeah, um, Pepe Williams, uh, it's crazy because he, he's looked good so far, uh, but I think, and this is a good thing, I think it's going to be hard for him to see the field because you got your outside guys in, in Humphrey and Peters, uh, then your slot guys that could be Fuller or, or Brandon Stevens, um, but then, and then when you think, all right, what if the Ravens have four cornerbacks out there? Then you would think, all right, it would be Kyle Fuller and Brandon Stevens. And then Pepe, like he, I mean, it, he's been the punt returner, so he probably still do that. But it just, I, it, I think it's going to be hard for him to see the field. Um, and again, that's a good thing because of everything that's in front of him. And the last question before we cue the intro came from my guy Nazarene. He said, hey, what's good, fam? I just wanted to ask you and team keep it clean. What do y'all think about this trade idea? Y'all can tweak it if you want to. I would trade Nick Boyle and Chuck Clark and a fourth round pick. For a top 20 first round pick Well You could do that next season I don't think anybody would give you a, a, a top 20 first round pick For Nick Boyle Often injured and just really a blocking Tight end so kind of like an extra offensive lineman That can catch uh, And Chuck Clark Smart uh, safety 
Um, and yeah, I, I, but I don't think anybody's gonna trade you a top twenty first round pick for Nick Boyle, Chuck Clark, and a fourth round pick. I, I I don't see that at all. I don't see anybody doing that. But anyway, he said, um, or uh, and then at the at the same time, like you obviously can't do that this year. You would have to wait until next off season. Um, because we wouldn't even know right now who would have a uh, a top 20 first round pick. But anyway, he said, or I would trade them Chuck and Nick for an excelling receiver if if our wide receivers are averaged by the trade deadline. Now, that that's an interesting one right there. See, for me, that would just really depend on how all of those guys are doing. Like, how is Nick Boyle doing? How is Chuck Clark doing? Are they a big part of what the Ravens do? Are they big contributors? Or are they guys that are sort of like, all right, well, we know what life is like without them. We can get by without them, and we're fully ready to move on. Because if you move, when, when you do move on from Chuck, that is you saying, hey, we're fully committed to Kyle Hamilton now. And obviously, you're going to be fully committed to him. He's a first-round pick, but that would be really pushing all your chips in on Kyle Hamilton. And it could work. And eventually the Ravens are going to do that. It ain't like Kyle Hamilton is going to be the backup to Chuck Clark or Marcus Williams forever. No. He was a first-round pick for a reason because the Ravens see the future with him at the safety position. So it's just a matter of time before they do put all their chips in. But when is that going to be? Uh, but he said uh, it gives us enough time to analyze what we have. Plus, EDC likes trading in the middle of the season when he sees a weakness. Uh, likely is definitely going to start over Nick this year. I uh, don't know which week it will be, but he's going to start. Uh, plus, when Nick comes in, every defensive coordinator knows it might be a run play more than likely. Ah, little likely pun there. Uh, see, likely name popped up in that sentence I just typed. Anyway, um, also, Kyle Hamilton is a first-round pick and a top-10 talent in the draft. He's a freak at the safety position, and we have good safeties behind him and Chuck. When we get Marcus Peters back, that's when it will be safe to trade Chuck, though. Oh, I mean, he's back. He's back. So, hey. He said they are prying Kyle Hamilton too much money. Oh, they are paying Kyle Hamilton too much money to let him sit. Keep up the work, bro. I mean, yeah, he, again, he's a first-round pick, so the expectations are going to be high. Um, and eventually, yeah, he's going to end up being a starter. When that time will come, will it be this season? We'll have to wait and see. Cue the intro. Yeah, this feels like a dream. So team keep it clean welcome to another episode of questions from y'all and to get us started um with this second half first question came from my guy zay the gamer he said hey what's up engraving uh, i want to give you a quick shout out for all the content you put out uh, you make the raven season and off season that much better it ain't got nothing to do with me it, it, it's y'all it's y'all straight up man it, it ain't got nothing to do with me it, it's all y'all um so i appreciate y'all for making this off season fly by uh, he said, now, I was watching some highlights from Lamar's MVP season and how Mark Ingram hyped up Lamar. Do you think Mark Ingram's energy helped Lamar's performance? Oh, for sure. For sure, because uh, just his energy, his vibe, his leadership, um, and then his play, too, because his, his play wasn't bad either. Uh, he was a big contributor to the Ravens. He got a lot of stuff started. He got the whole big trust thing started. That was back in 2019. People still saying that now. Um, and and he, just, he was just such a, a big part of just the Ravens' culture, and he really helped be a big part of the shift because the shift was still happening. The shift wasn't over in 2018. That's where it started. But the shift from Flacco to Lamar. 2018 is where it started, but 2019 is when that shift, it, was, it, it really got complete. So Mark Ingram was a huge part of that. Um, and he said, if so, do you think Lamar needs someone on the offensive side of the ball to match his energy? Sorry if the question got a little long. Hope you and the fam are well and keep up the great content. No, man, that question wasn't long at all. I would love that. I, I, I would love that. Um, somebody who can really bring that hype like that. And I think Bateman can be a different version of that. I think Prochet could be a, a different version of that. Devin Duvernay, he seemed pretty quiet. Uh, so I don't really think he would be like that. Um, and as far as the running backs, uh, JK, he's he not really hype like that. Like he make a play and he'll, he'll flex or something like that, but he'll point at the first down and drop the ball or something like that, but he ain't really hype, hype like that. 
Um, so man, who who do we have? Maybe uh, maybe likely, but, but um, so yeah, man. I guess I don't know. Yeah, but it, it certainly wouldn't hurt. It certainly wouldn't hurt to to have somebody like that, um, and somebody who if 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 things are just rough, they could look at Lamar in the eye and be like, hey. I got you. And I'm sure the guys who are on the team right now, they do that. Um, but, yeah, it certainly wouldn't hurt to have somebody like who's, uh, I guess, extroverted um, because that can make a, a real, real big difference. Because everybody on the inside, they may know, like, hey, Lamar, I got you. Hey, we got each other's back. They may, not, they may know that on the inside, but it's nice to have somebody who displays it on the outside, too. Next question came from my guy Donovan. He said, hey, Graven, hope all is well. How would you feel if we traded for Andy Isabella? I like the Demarcus Robinson signing. It gives us a bigger wide receiver with experience across from Bateman. But if we could trade and add Isabella to the mix, that would give us 4-3 speed that could take the top off of defense and keeping the defense honest like we did with Hollywood. Only thing is, that means Bridges and or Wallace would probably be cut. First, I don't, I don't see um, Tylen Wallace being cut. I don't see a scenario where Tylen Wallace is, is is released. Possible stash, PUP, so I, but I don't see released at all. Um, he's a fourth round pick last year. He's a, he's a fourth round pick last year. I just I don't see it. Uh, but I mean anything's possible. But I just don't see that. Um, as far as Bridges, yeah, uh, Bridges, Polk, um, it will put a lot of pressure on those guys. Andy Isabella, yeah, fast receiver, um, and he'll fight. He'll fight like again. I loved his battle uh, last week with him and Brandon Stevens, just them going back and forth. I love that the quarterback kept trying him, um, kept trying Brandon Stevens, and kept trying to get it to Andy Isabella. But um, I don't know. He and he did play a little outside receiver too. I look at him more as, as a slot guy. But I mean, they they could get it. It couldn't hurt because it'd be another weapon. So yeah, it, it couldn't hurt. Um, and yeah, he could take the. But a lot of stuff that you were explaining, uh, Demarcus Robinson can do that stuff. Uh, but it would not hurt to have even more people that can do that. Because, um, again, the, the more the merrier. Next question came from my guy, BB. He said, do you think Raven should move Isaiah Likely to wide receiver or should he stay at tight end? Uh, Bolden lookalike is a beast. We appreciate you in the 502. I appreciate it, BB. Um, no, he, he should just stay where he's at. Stay, stay at tight end. He doesn't, need to, he doesn't need to change positions to have an impact uh, at another position. Let's see uh, how the Ravens use him. And again, he, he's going to get used. I am fully confident that he is going to get used. because See, think about this. The Ravens offense, receivers don't get featured like that. So you want likely to move to receiver? Uh, I, don't, I don't think you do. So leave likely where he is as a tight end. Because the Ravens see that. Oh, he's a tight end? Oh, yeah. We're we about to throw this dude the ball a lot. We're about to have him involved a lot. We're about to game plan for this guy a lot. He is going to be involved in our game plan. Something that they don't do with the wide receivers like that. So hopefully this year will be different. Hopefully this year will be a shift. Um, but seeing is believing. Um, but yeah, he, he don't need to move to wide receiver. And the last question on this episode came from my guy Oreo Cookie. Uh, and before we get into this question, we'll see y'all tonight uh, for the live stream. But anyway, he said, hello and getting engraving. I was wondering what the recent emergence of Isaiah Likely. See, everybody's on that Isaiah Likely hype train, man. Everybody. But anyway, he said, with the recent emergence of Isaiah Likely, does that make you feel better about our Super Bowl chances? Go Ravens and have a good rest of your day. Um, Yeah, it, 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 it does a little bit. Um, But still, my, my biggest question mark is, is still how these wide receivers are going to show up uh, every Sunday, Monday, Thursday, sometimes Saturdays uh, and whatnot. Um, that's my biggest thing. How are the Ravens going to implement the wide receivers in the game plan? Because that's that's the biggest question mark that I have as far as them making the Super Bowl. With, obviously with health, um, but with health uh, at quarterback, I feel like they set. Running back, I feel like they set. Uh, wide receiver, it's just the unknown. Tight end, I feel like they are more than set. Offensive line, I think, is good enough. Ronnie Stanley just came back, so that's great. Um, defensive line, it's going to be nice when you get Travis Jones back. He shouldn't have been playing that late into the preseason game. But anyway, stuff happens. Uh, but the defensive line, I feel like, is is set. Um, pass rush, oof, it's a little rough there. Um, but they probably signed somebody. Um, secondary, set. Linebackers, ooh, it's a little rough there too. But I think they could be good enough. Um, it's a little thin there though. It's very, very thin there. It's, ooh, yeah. Um, 
But yeah, I, I think that the team, the roster uh, overall, it, it's a pretty good roster. Um, but just it's just question marks to receiver, and and not even just the actually not even just the personnel, but how they are used, how they're implemented into the game plan, and if they're gonna get played to their strengths. Because again, with the tight ends, Ravens play them to their strengths all the time, and we always get to really see. All right, was this tight end like that? We we always get to see that. We get to find out if this tight end was a real deal, if this tight end wasn't a real deal. Um, we, we find that out with offensive linemen. We find that out a lot of time with defense, but it's just wide receiver where we always have a lot of question marks most of the time. Uh, so hopefully all those questions get answered, and hopefully uh, these wide receivers, they, they really, really pan out. Because I'm rooting for We all rooting for uh, We want Bateman to go out there and do his thing. Prochet, Duvernay, Tylen Wallace, Bridges, Polk, Demarcus Robinson, whoever ends up making a, that final 53. Uh, we want them to go out there and just crush it uh, and prove a lot of naysayers wrong. And, and me, as somebody who not even necessarily doubting a wide receiver, and y'all know all offseason, I've just wanted them to get somebody uh, who's proven. Um, but again, since they didn't do that, all right, cool. Well, let, let, let's see what these boys got, and let's really like, let's really see what these boys got. Not all right. We um, this receiver goes for. His, 71 yards one week. Okay, we have him inactive the next week. No, 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 no. Let's like really give these guys chances. Like we talked about before, it's not just on Harbaugh and Greg Roman to give these wide receivers chances. It's not. It's on Lamar Jackson too. It's on Lamar Jackson too. It's, it's on him to get them that ball, to get them them opportunities. That's one-on-ones. Um, get him the jump ball. Hey, that's pro shade thing, ain't it? I know that's pro shade thing. Rashad Bateman. Y'all gonna throw some screens to Devin DuVernay? Hit him with the deep pass or something like that? Okay, cool. Hey, but Lamar, he gotta, he gotta find these guys too. And he gotta look for these guys too. And a thing with him too, um, he just, they, they gotta build that trust. And it, and it obviously goes both ways. Like Lamar, gotta get them the ball. He, he gotta find a way to get them the ball. Uh, but then they gotta come down with it too. They gotta come down with it. Um, and that's, it's all about repetition. All about repetition. Because, say, for instance, if, if it's somebody Lamar never throws the ball to, then it's, it'll be easy not to even look that person's way. If a play is happening, and it's, it could be easy to be like, oh, um, no. Nah. But if it's somebody you didn't throw the ball to and, and, and you got that rapport with them and whatnot, and he's obviously built a rapport uh, over the years and over this offseason, too. Um, so, yeah, man, it's, it's important that he gets everybody involved and, and the Ravens get everybody involved, too. Because that'll just make things a lot easier. It'll make stuff a lot less complicated. It'll just make the, the flow of the game uh, that much better. All right, I thought that that previous question was going to be the last one. But my guy, Chris K., he literally just sent the question. We were actually in the middle of editing the video and all. But he just got his question in. But anyway, he said, hey, man, just wanted to say uh, what's up to the whole team. Keep it clean, crew. Appreciate that. Uh, I think we are going to see something special this year. Uh, I did have one question. Now, with outside linebacker being thin early, do you think they will play more DB and safety sets so Justin Houston and Oway don't get gassed? Keep up the great work. And he said, uh, do, you do you think with them playing more DB and safety sets that they'll still be uh, as successful? Well, I mean, the Houston, DBs and safeties, they, they're not pass rushers. Well, some of them are like Jamal Adams, they can be, but they're not pass rushers. That's not what they specialize in. Um, so you still need those guys. And I, I, think, I think they'll sign somebody. I, I think the Ravens will end up signing somebody just to uh, alleviate that pressure off of everything being on the way, everything being on um, Justin Houston, everything Dalen Hayes, uh, Stephen Means. Um, they, they'll sign somebody. Who that somebody is? Will it be a JPP? Because I know there's been a lot of talk about him. The Ravens brought him in for a visit earlier. Um, so we'll see if they like, hey, JPP, what's up, big head? Hey, you you Florida Raven? Because he's from Deerfield Beach. Hey, you, you want to come through and play for the Ravens this year? We could do something. But um, whoever it ends up, I think they, they're definitely going to sign somebody. Who it is? No clue. Yeah, this feels like a dream.
brighter and greater.